Okay guys, turn Gringo Ham here. Welcome back, and we're gonna continue on with the Demon Souls remake complete walkthrough. Uh, so we just killed uh, Flame Lurker. We have a lot of things to do in this episode. Uh, first things first, we've got a lot of souls, but we also have some consumables. So let's go ahead and burn through those. And then we'll save the rest of these. So, um, Soul of the Flame Lurker Demon. It used to be called Red Hot Dream Demon Soul. Now it's called Searing Demon Soul. So this is going to be the one that uh, we can give to our uh, blacksmith, uh, unless they change something. Uh, but let's go ahead and here and uh, level up. So I wanted to get to 25. Uh, I do want to. I do want to eventually get to about 15 endurance, uh, and then we're really going to focus on magic and intelligence. Uh, casters don't need a lot of endurance. I just want a little bit more cushion. It should take us up to around uh, 100 stamina, which is a, a pretty good sweet spot for casters. Uh, and then from then, we're just going to pump into magic and intelligence. Intelligence, as you can see here, if I pump it up, you can see it, it increases your MP pool, uh, but it also increases your magic memory at certain thresholds. So that's uh, we're definitely going to want more spells on the bar. We're going to end up with Firestorm, which is going to be our boss destroyer spell. And when I say boss destroyer, if they haven't changed anything about it, and they said they didn't, I'm talking about one to two shot in bosses it's ridiculously overpowered um but it's why you play play a caster class so uh, we're definitely going to play around with it we'll stick with our 25 vitality and our couple of points of endurance here uh we'll be able to grab those last two endurance and start really pumping up our magic later uh ostrava's still here if you notice up there we actually got patches and patches becomes a vendor for us wow i remember you I'm glad you're here. I found some really tasty trinkets. <laughs> well, we've long been acquainted, so I'll give you a good price, eh? So if you check out here, he's got all your uh, your healing wares. He carries fresh spice, so we no longer have to go uh, off into a level to pick up fresh spice. Our stone shards, you're gonna you're gonna want to buy some of those at in game. Uh, just helps getting around a lot easier. If we didn't start as a caster class, you can pick up the uh, Fragrant Ring here. And he's got the Barbarian set, so. Um, Nothing here is stolen, I swear. Oh, I no longer partake of the whole corpse robbing thing. Yes, yes, I'm completely free from vice. <laughs> My old mother would be proud indeed. Aren't you proud of me too? You want to talk about just a whole bunch of lies. Well. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we do want to we do want to go die. We want to die at the Boletarian Palace. Let's take a look here. You'll notice since we came back to the Nexus, the Digger King is now pure white. So Skurver is going to show up, uh, as well as we're going to be able to get the um, uh, the Dragon Bone Smasher before we fight Dragon God. Uh, we're going to pay attention to the look of the eye over there on the Covetous King. We're going to see if it changes any when we go jump off the cliff over here. Uh, just want to see if we are fully uh, Dark Tendency or if we see any change to it. It does kind of show it up when you uh, pour it into an area, so that part's nice. Excuse me, sir. I want to go jump off the cliff here. Um, definitely be a faster way of dying than uh, letting them try to kill you. And remember, Tendency doesn't update until you go back to the Nexus. So, uh, we'll have to grab our souls, and then we'll have to pop back to the Nexus, and then look and see if it changed. Because it looks the same there. But since it doesn't update until you go back to the Nexus, we just won't know for certain. Right, got our souls. Head on back. I just have to say, by the way, that's really not a loading screen. That's fantastic how fast these uh, loading times are on the 
PlayStation 5. So let's take a look here at the tendency. Doesn't look like it changed at all. It did actually. Look at the uh, look at the the red spell effects there. So maybe that is what shows you indeed you are uh, at full dark tendency. So maybe they did make it a little easier. Um, because you notice you get the pulse on the pure white, so that tells you your max there. And then I guess the uh, the addition of the red tells you that your max dark tendency. Um, so I take back what I said. It does uh, it does help you um, tell a little better. All right, so uh, we're off to Stonefang Tunnel, but uh, before we go to the dragon uh, dragon god, we want to go to the smithing grounds. Go see our blacksmith. We did kill a boss, so that crystal lizard over there is gonna spawn again. We don't have our flame toss, so we'll have to take him out with our falchion here. Alright, he's one of the it's interesting these guys actually have health according to uh, you know the level so they're easier to kill here than they are down in the tunnels and so forth but not having flame toss really didn't hurt us there Drop here go ahead and drop here and let's give this guy a chat first we have to uh, talk to him and get through his dialogue what be your need if it be a blacksmith then show me your steel if not then head straight for the door Dude looks like he's had a lot of uh, fire accidents down here at the forge. It's uh, pretty gnarly, actually. Uh, so we just need to talk to him. The demon souls. They're like powerful spirits. Some can even bless weapons. But doing so requires a powerful flame. Invigorated by a demon soul of scorching heat. But he's talking to us about the uh, soul that we just picked up. I told you that I'm busy. Each ore has a grade. Mighty weapons can only be blessed by ores of high grade. The highest grade of all is a pure ore that shines in utter brilliance. A spirit force that delights the eyes. <laughs> so now he's talking about the pure stones. If he has anything else to say here. The highest grade of all. Nope, same thing. So now we need to uh, break off and talk to him again. And he should ask us about the soul that we have. Yes, that's the one. A searing demon soul. With it I can forge new breeds of weapon. Bring me your most powerful souls. Yes, we're going to give it to him. There's no other uh, use for it choice you've done well to put your trust in the great blacksmith Ed bring me a demon soul and I shall use it to bless your weapon here we go we got the trophy uh, so we're gonna go ahead and repair everything while we're here and then we'll look at upgrades so you can see here the crisp blade requires colorless demon souls now if you look at what you gain, you gain, you know, extra attack on the weapon. Um, but as you can see there, the the scaling on it is where we gain down uh, down at the uh, magic scaling. Uh, that's where we gain. However, this is not going to affect the bonus of the weapon that amplifies um, damage dealt and received by magic. So if we were to upgrade this, all we would do is gain more on the melee, and that's not what we carry the Chris Blade for. So we don't want to upgrade that with the Colorless Demon Soul. We're going to use that for uh, boss weapons later. Uh, Crescent Falchion, we still haven't gotten the Moonshade that we need for that, so it's going to hang out at plus two for right now. But if you look at the Dragon Sword... We picked up a lot of Dragonstone shards down there. So if we wanted a weapon that does fire damage and does a sizable chunk of it, now this is not going to scale with our magic, but it is going to be a nice fire uh, option. Uh, the Dragon Longsword is kind of perfect for us. It only takes 10 strength. It's a good fast weapon. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade this a little bit.
Hard six. Okay, so we're we're short on dragonstone shards, so we can't get the next level. But you can see here, it's 133 and 133. Now, it is split damage, so it has to go through multiple defenses, but if an enemy is weak to fire, this is going to be a really good weapon choice for us. And, uh, club, I believe this is the one. Yes, you can turn it into the meat cleaver with the swollen demon soul. This is a fantastic uh, strength weapon, the meat cleaver. It has S scaling with strength, S scaling with dex, A scaling with, um, faith. So, if you're looking for that, um, that build that works with cursed weapon and, uh, you know, a faith, uh, strength or quality, uh, either way, this is a fantastic weapon for that. And it's got real heavy stagger potential. Uh, definitely not, you know, the style of play that we're doing right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but keep that in mind, especially since you don't have to level that weapon up. It's just a free, um, you know, boss soul weapon that you don't have to... So a lot of the boss soul weapons, you have to get a base weapon, get it up to plus three, get it up to plus six, something like that, and then you can use a boss soul to uh, enhance it. But the club is special in the way that you don't have to upgrade it uh, to get that um, meat cleaver. Uh, hands of God. Uh, those can be upgraded with the colorless demon souls. And then Wooden Catalyst, we can turn into the Insanity Catalyst with a Golden Demon Soul. Uh, we're eventually going to want an Insanity Catalyst. Now, we probably won't use the Wooden Catalyst to make it, because you'll still want both Catalysts. And the reason why is, uh, let's see, drastically increasing the power of magic, but simultaneously having one's maximum MP. So, there's going to be times where we're going to want to use the Insanity Catalyst to do a lot of damage. Um... But we're, we're going to still want our fallback regular catalyst for, uh, you know, still having our maximum pool of MP. So um, we'll probably take the uh, silver catalyst and upgrade it at that time. Uh, shade heater. Uh, we picked this up in the last area. Let's take a look at it. If you notice, it's got more magical damage defense uh, than a base heater shield. The heater shield, I believe, has 40. Uh, and the more you upgrade it... Get back there... If I were to go to plus three, you'd gain up to 54. So the more you upgrade what used to be called dark, now it's called shade, uh, you gain uh, magical reduction uh, while holding it up. So it becomes a really strong uh, magical shield. And in fact, because it's 100% physical damage and we meet the requirements, we're actually going to switch to this as our primary shield for now. Uh, now, we don't have the materials to upgrade it, but it will be a straight upgrade from, from the uh, buckler at only 0.5 uh, more weight there. Well done. So anyway, we now have our uh, final blacksmith unlocked. We're gonna make our uh, weapon adjustments here. Heater shield on. We're gonna head back, uh, hit up stockpile Thomas, drop some stuff off, <clears throat> and then it'll be time for us to go take care of. Dragon God, get our Dragon Bone Smasher, and then we're going to go show it off to Skerber and uh, get our pure upgrade stuff. Hello again. I'm keeping a close watch. Uh, so we'll store this. Uh, yes, we need to change our clothes back. We used it for the Flame Resist, uh, but I really do like the new royal set, so we're going to stick with that. Hello again. I'm keeping a close watch. Okay. Uh, while we're here, drop off all of our crafting materials. Those are uh, a sizable amount of your weight. Especially if you get up to chunks. See, uh, hang on. Chunks are a weight of one. Clear stone, even the shards are 2.4. Uh, chunk is 3.5. Shard, the chunk, and now look at the pure dragon stone, 1.2. So, uh, definitely drop that stuff off. Uh, crescent Fountain, we don't want the Great Axe, we don't want the club, we don't want any of the fist weapons. We'll keep the Crescent and we'll keep the uh, Dragon Longsword if we want a fire weapon. Uh, we're done with the Buckler. 
That'll do it. We're down to 34 on weight again, so we're good to go. Let's go explore and we'll be able to pick stuff up. Now the Dragon Bone Smasher, if I remember, it's 20 units of weight, so we'll definitely have to have that room. We'll head back to the Underground Temple. That's where we took on the Flame Lurker. And I'm interested to see if Dragon God uh, is still as easy as he was. I wonder if they changed this up any at all. So you'll notice we're pure white. We'll have access to the Dragon Bone Smasher. Uh, there never was really anything down this hallway. It's pretty much from one boss to another. Uh, which kind of makes you want to just run through and, and do the, the next boss. But like I said, if you don't go back to the Nexus, your uh, tendency doesn't update. If your tendency doesn't update, then you don't get to run in here and grab that Dragon Bone Smasher. So here we go. Time for Dragon God. So uh, I'm going to take this shield out. Um, it's got some decent uh, flame resist. He'll breathe fire at one point, but there are pillars. <clears throat> excuse me, there are pillars, and you're gonna want to hide behind these pillars and watch for him. He'll give you cues as to when he's looking for you and when he's not, uh, and you can kind of get through here. Provided it works the same way it used to, you'll be able to get through here without taking um, damage from him. The first thing you want to do is let him do his, his first smash here. And then reline it around to the left. This is where we get our Dragon Bone Smasher. And we are just not going to get that uh, Crystal Lizard at this time. Wait for him to smash again. We're going to head over here and kind of hide behind a post. Okay, so we can stand here and just kind of shoot down these pillars. Another benefit of being a caster. Good for him, uh, it appears that when he looks to the to our right, that's your good window to take off without him seeing you. Run to the next area here. Shoot down those pillars. Okay, those are gone. We're gonna kind of go easy here and grab our souls, run back to this pillar. Billy looks again. I think we're gonna beeline it and just run the next time he looks that direction. Go, take off. Maybe we'll make it. Yeah, alright. I'll go ahead and grab this. New moon grass. That's good. And this is where we start uh, making it quite a bit easier. I don't know who put these here. I don't know why he hangs out here. They're available to just, you know, harpoon him. But you can notice he created a uh, walkway pathway for us there. Uh, he does not seem very happy that we harpooned him, but we did kind of hamstring his movements there. But once again, we're going to be playing the Looky Loo game. Looking off the other direction. Pick that opportunity to come here. Let's see if we can take care of these from here. We should be able to. I'm gonna assume when he's turned all the way over that other direction that we're we're good to move here. 
Watch his head swivel for a second. Okay, looks over here. That'd be the unsafe time to run. And then he looks over there. That should be the safe time to run. Should be able to hit those from here. for him to do his head swivel thing. Okay, so this should be the last block before we get to run up the other side to the harpoon. Let's see if we got any spice. I don't think we do. Yeah, that's sad. We do not have spice, so uh, bring some spice when you come here. That would be the uh, smart thing to do. Kind of give it uh, give it time for our MP to recharge a little bit here. Uh, his head movements uh, definitely changed between the old style and the old game in this game. He used to uh, pivot his head straight up into the sky, and that was your cue to take off and run. But it appears this time it's all about when he looks uh, to the right up top and to the left down here. Uh, I did kind of pop in here. You'll notice there was an edit between um, when we picked up the sword and um, this attempt. I came in here and just kind of messed around to watch his head movements just to give me an idea of uh, how we're really trying to uh, avoid his, his looks. Um, that way you didn't have to suffer through me, uh, you know, checking out the head patterns and everything. But up top, when he looks right, that's your cue to run. Down here, when he looks left, that's your cue to run. He's looking at us right now. If we were to move, he would see us and freak out there. Wait for him to look left. Looks like we've got one more stack of uh, pillars over there. But we should be able to run to that pillar right there next. There we go, that one's taken care of. Now we're gonna wait for him, uh, we just wanna make sure we're safe about it, so we'll wait for him to look at us. There he goes, and then when he looks back the other direction, Now we'll head off to this pillar. Okay, so yeah, we definitely can't hit that from here. I don't know if you can hide behind that pillar or not uh, to get a shot at it. But what we're going to plan on doing is running up there and, and meleeing it. Wait for him to look. Back the other direction and let's... Actually, while we're here, let's just, uh, let's see. Take off. And can we get up here before he breathes fire? We do. Alright. Fantastic. We'll fire off this other harpoon, and now we have efficiently maimed him. We've got our crystal lizard over here. We could have gone after him uh, right off the bat, 
But then the uh, dragon might have breathed fire on us, so. You'll see right here, you've got kind of a, you've got an item, but you've got kind of a, a view to where the dragon bone smasher was. Uh, just, uh, you know, now that you've seen this, just make sure you bring some, uh, some spice with you when you come down here, and that'll take a lot less time. Uh, we are lucky that we have the, uh, ring there to help us out, but with some spice that, that could have gone just so much faster. Head down here, and he's basically just waiting for us to kill him. And he can hit you when his head drops down, so. Shoot him back up. His head goes up. And there we go. We got the Dragon Bone Smasher. We killed Dragon God. Nexial Agent, the Pure Dragon Stone, and the Archdemon Soul. Now, that means that we can actually go back to the first area and we can go into the uh, third portion of the first world. Anytime, and each one of these areas, they have an Archdemon for the final boss. So anytime you kill an Archdemon, uh, that allows you access to that. There's a little drop down here for an item. <laughs> And I believe that's it, but we'll uh, we'll come up this way just to look, make sure there's no items that we missed. Uh, now this is a, a nice little farm for two crystal lizards here, uh, but you'll want to push this to dark tendency, black tendency before you come back in here and farm them because it'll be easy. There's no boss in the room, no enemies to deal with, just a couple of crystal lizards. Um, so once you push your tendency back black here. Um, come here and farm those lizards out. Yep, we got everything. Uh, we're going to go ahead and head back now. We'll spin the souls we got. That should take us up to our 15 cap of uh, endurance that we wanted. And then from there, we're going to go see Skurver the Wanderer. He wants to see this dragon bone smasher that we got. <clears throat> Where you at? There you are. Thou seekest the path and then touch the soul of the mind. Okay, there we go. We've got our endurance where we want it. Now we can pump everything we've got into magic and intelligence from here on. So, uh, Skurva the Wonder only shows up in pure white tendency. We have to make sure that when we drop down there, we don't die getting to him. We're going to start from, yes, Tunnel City. Um, this is this is the time where the drop down matters. You need to make sure you get to Skurver without um, without dying. Otherwise, he won't be there anymore. So, all right, calm down there, buddy. Those pickaxe guys. I'm just not a fan. They have all of that poise. We're gonna fight our way through here. I know we can run past, but if you just get in a bad situation, you never know what can happen. You could end up dying, and then you don't have the pure white world tendency for scurvy. So, trust me, just fight your way through. There are times to run around baldy, and then there are times to play it safe. 
Safe route. See, the crystal lizards are still down there. Um, if we had tried to grab them right now, uh, we may end up it hitting Skurver, which is fine. We're gonna we're gonna take care of him in a minute. But um, until then. Uh, we don't want to we don't want to damage him we've got to talk to him probably unless we can get him to just kind of go this way okay let's see oh, i'll be we got them both All right, let's have a chat with this guy. Oh, the gods. You nearly frightened me to death, creeping up on me like that. My name is Skurva. I seek treasures of the unknown. I'm impressed you've come this far. Were you guided by a sixth sense? Or just plain lucky? Either way, you're quite something. Shall we put your luck or skill to the test? Have you heard of the temple below? It is a work of art molded by the ancient borrowers to appease the bones of dragons. As a precaution, a broad sword which can crush the bones of drakes is stored in the temple. Truth told, it's the laughing stock of many a swordsmith. They say <laughs> it's as blunt as a bludgeon. A dull blade <laughs> meant to slay a dragon. <laughs> Curious, is it not? I would search for it myself, but I'm afraid I'd fare poorly against the demons. If you happen to come upon the sword, please let me have a look at it. This place is incredible, eh? The bones of dragons exuding awe. A dream come true. So he's really interested to see the sword. Hey, lads. You found it. Let me have a look. So in order to show him, we actually have to equip it. We won't be able to swing it, but he just wants to see it. And he's talking about how it's dull and <laughs> it's a really bad sword. It really is. Uh, it's all about the weight of this thing, though. Uh, and you can destroy enemies with this thing. But as you can see... Oops. The requirements on it, 30 strength to one-hand it. So uh, definitely a hefty investment. Let's show it to him. Oh, wonderful. The arts of swordsmanship applied in a perfectly useless manner. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, don't mind me. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Please take this. Is a small show of thanks. Take care of this one, will you? She's a stunner. Okay, so we got our pure gray stone. Uh, so there's Take care of this one, will you? There's not really much uh, else to gain from talking to him. However, we are now done with all of the white tendency stuff in this uh, entire world. Uh, so to help push us to black. One of the best ways to do it. You go mad. You've nothing to gain by assaulting me. Stop it. Now, he's got some pretty healthy fire spells. Especially when he's a black phantom. He's gonna be quite a handful when we come back down here and kill him as a black phantom. But for now we need to go ahead and kill him because he's going to give us a good swing back towards uh, Black Tendency. Anytime you kill an NPC, it's almost a... Ooh, yeah, there it is. A spicy fireball. Uh, 
Anytime you kill a, a friendly NPC that's a uh, that is a tendency character, it gives you almost a full swing back to uh, neutral on your tendency. So we got the Ronin ring for killing him. We'll go ahead and arch stone out of here. Show you the Ronin ring here. Uh, one of several rings originating in a distant land known for its unique sword crafting technique. This ring uh, too was crafted with a comparably uncommon process. Um, it basically slows your uh, degradation of your weapons. It's not an it's not a necessary ring in this game. Um, the only time uh, it would be helpful is if you're going up against somebody in PvP that has a scraping spear. A scraping spear will uh, break your items. So if you wear this when somebody's coming after you with a, a scraping spear, it'll keep it from breaking your weapon. So we've uh, if we take a look now. You'll see how we're almost, uh, well, we look like we're right about neutral back at, at the uh, Digger King, and that's why we killed him while we were there. Um, light tendency versions of people can be killed, and then they still show up as a black tendency version. And that is the easiest way to start swinging your um, tendency back towards uh, black for each area. So we've done all the white. Now we just need to uh, push it to black. That means every time that we're human, we want to go back to uh, the Digger King Archstone and die there. So anyway, that takes care of a good chunk of stuff. Uh, we're ready to head back to Shrine of Storms and continue on from there. Um, we do have access to the third area of the Boletarian Palace. So we could go ahead and go there and free Carla, uh, get her, wait. Carla. I'm getting Dark Souls mixed up. Uria. Uh, we can go uh, free Uria and get, you know, our, our higher level spells. But I think we will do the uh, Shrine of Storms first. Um, so in the next episode, we'll go ahead and we'll go die um, where we were at. Uh, take a little dive down that tunnel or something uh, to go ahead and start pushing towards Black there. Uh, we'll take on the Shrine of Storms, finish that area, and then we'll head back to Boletarian Palace and um, free Uria. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit me up in the comments section down below. Uh, I enjoy talking to you guys. So uh, notifications button if you want to get notified every time we have a new uh, episode come out. And until the next video, thanks for watching.